Okay, let's look at each joint individually. So here we'll look at the knee joint. Um, there's going to be videos of the knee, hip, ankle on Blackboard that you can look at different speeds. I'll post three different speeds so you can analyze it on your own. Okay, so the first thing when we get a graph, determine what it is, what joint. Obviously, this is the knee joint. And then you want to determine, um, is it the displacement or position, the velocity, or the acceleration? And if it's running or walking. All right, so this speed, 2.79 meters per second, is jogging running. So this would be a running graph. You have position in degrees along the y-axis and percent of cycle along the x-axis. Now it's interesting why we do the percent of cycle, and that's because people run at different speeds, and if you, um, what they call rubber band it to 100% from foot contact to the, the subsequent foot contact for a stride, then you can compare between people that are between the people that are, are running faster or slower. Okay. The second thing I like to do is make a line and figure out where the stance phase and the swing phase is. So the stance phase when you're in contact with the ground, swing phase when your foot is, is off the ground or you're in the flight phase. And as we discussed earlier, walking is typically 40% stance, 60% swing. So I put this green line there. And then, it's, you can, first thing you should know, it's a pretty cyclical movement. If you look at the degrees of knee flexion, there's more flexion in the swing phase. And then I put these points, um, and these are important points that you could start to analyze. So at foot contact, your knee is not extended. It's flexed about 20 degrees. And then you go into more knee flexion. So you go from 20 degrees of knee flexion to 40 degrees. So you are flexing your knee. At that point, um, the velocity is zero. And if you recall from the last slides, the velocity is zero when you're changing direction. So here you're going from flexion, and then you're going to start to go into extension. All right, so we don't look at one point and say, are we flexing or extending? We go along these slopes. Flexion, and you're going less into flexion or into extension flexion, extension. All right, so from one to two is extension. Then two, the velocity would be zero. And then from two to four, since you're going from 20 degrees of flexion to about 105 degrees of flexion, you are flexing your knee. What would three be? Midway between that motion is your max velocity. So this is your max knee flexion velocity. At four, since you're changing from flexion to extension yet again, to, to kind of extend that foot out for um, heel contact, the velocity is zero. From four to six, you're extending, and five would be your max extension velocity. So first, we're gonna look at a velocity curve, and we're gonna say, at point 0.1, which is about 15%, and point 0.4, about 70%, the velocity should be zero. So let's take a look. About 15%, velocity is zero, right here's zero, and at 70%, your velocity is zero. This graph has three lines because this is the combined velocity graph of all the three speeds that I have for the knee joint, and the hip joint, and the ankle joint. All right, so then you have ex flexion is positive, extension is negative, you have your peak flexion velocity occurring somewhere about 50%, and your peak extension velocity occurring somewhere around 90%. So let's see if that works. So here I, I put them one on top of the other so you could take an easier look. So this is where velocity is zero and zero. So your peak flexion velocity at three is right here. Velocity is the highest, and your peak extension velocity is 5. And even though you might think, oh, this is where velocity is the lowest because it's negative, remember, negative is a direction. And in this case, negative represents the extensor direction. So this is, as it gets more negative, you are going faster in extension. Other video.